Hey, business owners, would it be valuable to you if you could get all the ninja tips and tricks to scale your business from somebody who's already walked the walk and created a solid business with eight-figure annual revenue? And whether you're a new entrepreneur, maybe you're a seasoned business owner preparing to grow your business, or maybe even preparing to exit your business, we've got you covered today in this episode. I am super pumped. Um, Brian Clayton is here to talk to us about that. So buckle up for this amazing show. I'm awesome, Angie Ingstrom. And I'm Gary Adgard. And let's start by welcoming Brian Clayton to, to Momentum Makers Podcast. We're so happy to have you here today, Brian. Welcome. Well, th well thank <laughs> you for having me on. That was a great introduction. It's great to be here. <laughs> great. Okay, I just want to say to our listeners, this is going to be an awesome episode if you're looking, if you're a business owner, because Brian is going to share, I hope, <laughs> lots of great tips. So, so stay tuned and, and, and listen. Now, some of you may not know Brian, so let me just share a little bit about him. Brian first got into the lawn care industry at the age of 15, and by the time he graduated from college, he had a full-fledged lawn care business with 10 employees and over 100 customers. 15 years later, it had grown to over 150 employees and $10 million in annual revenue. That's jaw dropping, right? Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay, Brian eventually sold the company and went on to be a co founder of Green Pal, also known as the Uber for Lawn. And he's also known for his expertise in bootstrapping businesses from zero revenue to profitability. And exit. So we are so happy and so excited to have you on the show today, Brian. Welcome and let's go. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me on. That was a great introduction. Uh, thank well, you. Thank you. I'm excited <laughs> for this. Um, so give us like 10 seconds. Like, what is your business? And then let's get into your story. I'm excited to share this with the world. Yeah, so I'm co-founder of a company called GreenPal. GreenPal is an app that works like like Uber uh, or DoorDash if you're in the United States or Instacart and for lawn care services. So if you have a yard and it grows and you need to get somebody to mow it, you just download the app, you pop your address in, and you get quotes from lawn care services nearby you competing for your business. And then you can hire one of them and they come out and take care of it for you. And then you can schedule and pay them right through the app. It just happens like clockwork in the background. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And GreenPal is a 10-year overnight success. My two co-founders and I have been at this for a little over a decade. Around 300,000 people using the app every week to get lawn mowing done. And, and we want to get it to a million people. So uh, that's that's uh, that's what GreenPal is. And 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 we, we want to uh, be the easiest way that you can get this done at a touch of a button. That's fantastic. I love that. The Uber for lawn care. Yes. Mm, yes. Sounds so great. <laughs> Are there any parts of the U.S. you can't reach right now? Are you still reaching through the U.S.? Or So we, uh, it's a great question. We, we started off in Nashville, Tennessee, and we spent three years in Nashville making the app work well in terms of when you hire somebody, they show up, they do a good job, um, and making it to where contractors can earn a good living on the platform. And, uh, and, and, and then we started expanding into other cities and it took a, it took a long time to kind of develop that playbook, but now it is nationwide in the United States or in any town where you, there's over 15,000 people, you can use the app to, to get lawn mowing done. So around 400 cities in the United States now. That's amazing. Mm. I love this. So tell us what inspired you to get started with that? Cause it, you, you had a successful business business going, it sounded like. And so tell us about how that all this transpired. Yeah. So my first business was a lawn mowing business, started cutting grass in high school, uh, like a lot of kids do. And, and, and then when I went to college, I had to figure out, okay, well, how am I going to pay for college? I guess I, I guess I'll just keep mowing yards. And I didn't really want, didn't really want to, didn't really like the lawn mowing business, but I, I saw it as a way to kind of not take on a bunch of student loans. And so, and so uh, <laughs> I, I took night classes at night and mowed yards all day and, I would go to go to night classes with grass clippings all over me and smelling like gasoline and my my classmates probably hated me but but I did that for like 5 years and and got a business degree and then after I graduated college I, I had to make a decision was I going to like stick with this lawn care company I didn't really want to be a lawn guy but I thought you know this could be my lane this could be 
business ownership could be the thing that I could kind of pour my, my passion into. And so I, I made a little business plan and I thought if I can just get it to where I had four or five crews going out every day and I could manage those crews, that would be something fun to run. And, and, and I thought I could do it in five years and I ended up being, I ended up doing it in two. And, and after that, I made a decision, okay, I'm just going to grow this company to be one of the, 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 the industry leaders in my market. And that was middle Tennessee around Nashville, Tennessee. And over a 15 year period of time, I, I built that to around 150 employees and, and eight figures in revenue. And, over the course of building that business, I saw how inefficient the lawn mowing business operates and, and how most lawn care companies that, that run their small business are just organized chaos every day. They're, they're just a mess. And yeah, there's software that you can use to help alleviate some of that, but there was no solution where you had like an operating system where you could keep everything organized in one place and, and, and help, help with things like bookkeeping and marketing and, and, uh, and, and customer relations and all of these things, like one toolkit. So I thought, well, somebody, you know, somebody needs to build that. And, and after I sold the company, uh, I, I thought, well, you know, I, I don't really know anything about, about the tech space, but, but uh, maybe I could build that. Maybe I could build like this operating system where lawn care companies could run their whole business and then easily get connected with, with people who need their services. Uh, because the same problem exists on the on the on the consumer side as well. It's it's hard to find them. It's hard to schedule them. It's hard to pay them. And so I saw that there was a problem on both sides of the the buyer side and the seller side. And and at the time, Uber was just getting going. So they kind of they kind of showed the world that that uh, you could push a button on your phone and something happened in the real world. Up until then, it was very much just just. Uh, you know, bits on your phone. It was, it was, uh, it was all digital, you know, sure. You could share a picture. Oh, uh, you could post what you ate for breakfast, but nothing really happened in the real world from pushing a button on your phone. Well, well, Uber showed us that, that that could be the reality. And, and so I took inspiration from that and I thought, well, somebody's going to build us build a platform to make this work. Why, why can't that be me? And uh, recruited two co-founders, and we started working on on the idea for for what the Uber for lawn care could could look like. I love that. Why can't it be me? I love that. True yeah. entrepreneur. There you go. <laughs> Why not give it a go? That's awesome. I love that. I love that. So you totally. your degree in college was business business degree. That's right. Yeah. So went to school for for business management and and. Uh, it was kind of a weird thing when I was in business school, I was learning, you know, I was taking business classes, but I was also running a business at the same time. And there was this weird disconnect of what I was learning in business school versus what I was doing. And it was like, man, none of this is this, like, this isn't actually how you run a small business. This isn't actually, uh, this isn't actually how, how small business actually works. And I, and I, what I took away from business school was that, Nobody teaches us how to run a small business. Nobody teaches us how to how to get a business going from zero from scratch. It, it, you know, maybe maybe nowadays, you know, with YouTube University, you can you can learn these things just through trial and error. But but back then, uh, definitely not. And so that was one of the problems we set out to solve with GreenPal was to give small business owners in the lawn mowing business a kind of a, a, a coach in their pocket almost, a, 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 a modulated experience of, okay, this is what it means to be, to, to be punctual and to be proactive and to be on time and, and to do a good job for your clients. And this is why it matters. And this is how you can grow your business with, with, with pricing correctly and, and, uh, and following up after you do a job and, and, uh, and accurately billing them for the, for what you said you would do. Like all of these basic things nobody teaches us how to do and so it was one of those funny things when when i was in college that you know while i was running a company that that uh, i was like man none of 90 percent of this is not actually how it happens mm -hmm. in the real world very funny yeah yeah i, I, I sort of recognize that, that. I, I was thinking if if they are you're a business owner and you're watching this show what would be your advice to to sort of get started and yeah Scale, totally. Eventually. So, so if, if you, uh, if, if, if you're thinking about starting a business or if you're just getting started, um, the, my advice would be, uh, 
manage your expectations would be the first the first piece of advice. So so you you have to know that it's going to be a five to ten year commitment to whatever this business idea is. Uh, because I think what 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 hangs up a lot of new founders is they they want the they want the success to come very quickly because that's kind mm-hmm. of the myth that is dispelled upon them in in social media and 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 the news media and the, and the tech press and it does it's, there, there is no overnight successes so 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 the first thing is just like manage your own expectations to know that okay whatever this business idea is i'm going to dedicate 5 10 years of my life to it and and you know 6 7 days a week to to get it going um and it, and if you're not really uh Gung ho about that, then maybe you know this is not the right path for you to dedicate your life to, um, and because the reality is, is like success is 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 expectations minus results, and so what did you expect to happen? What actually happened? And then you're then you feel like if you're successful or not, and if you can manage your expectations and say, okay, well, it's my first year in business. I'm just going to try to get my first ten customers or or my first month, I'm going to try to get my first customer and, and, uh, and make it real practical, real actionable. Um, that, that can help you get started. It's, it's very easy to hide behind like very big goals. And it's very easy to hide behind like uh, wanting to change the world almost. It, like if, if you have like a really huge goal of a really big business or, or something, some big lofty goal, it's very easy to hide behind that. It's not easy to, to hide behind the goal of, I'm going to have one customer by the end of the week paying me a hundred dollars. Um, and, and so the, 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 the more you can dial in your expectations and your goals, uh, the better. And, and, and because then those small wins begin to build and compound. I love that. Mm. Yeah. But can so, you so also... you avoid. Go ahead, Gady. Um, I'm just just gonna say. So, so you actually you avoid the disappointment in setting goals which are sort of unachievable. Yeah. Totally, totally, and and you know it's important. Like it's important to have the goals, but you they almost don't matter. It really is the daily habits and the daily systems and the daily the daily reps that you're putting in that matter. I would focus all of my time on, you know, what what are the things that I'm doing this week and and uh the actual like the actual practical things I'm doing this week and not what the goal is. And 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 if you can look at it that way, it can help keep you oriented towards action and getting real things done. And most of the time, when you're starting a new business, it it's two things: it's building something or building a business service, and getting customers to use that thing. It's like if you're doing anything other than those two things, you're almost wasting your time mm-hmm. uh, for the first year or two. And and until you've got some momentum around that, where it's like, okay, I got the the service, I got the thing, it's it's up and going, and I got customers using it. Now I can get I can begin to layer on all of these other functions like marketing and all these processes and branding and all these things that I, that I, that a lot of people waste their time doing um, in the early days when it's too early to be doing those things. I love this. Oh my gosh. If you're a brand new business owner uh, or a young entrepreneur, that was brilliant. That was so gold right there. Thank mm-hmm. you, Brian. That's awesome. I, I, I'd love to hear the next step. So let's talk to those business owners that are growing their business. Um, what, what success tips would you give to them? Like they've, they've gotten through that first bit you just talked about. And now they're, now they're in that growing stage. What's advice for those people? Yeah. Let's say you have a little something going. Um, maybe you've got, uh, maybe you've got your first hundred grand a year in revenue or 250 grand a year in revenue. And, and it's it's something, some money's coming in. And what, what, what you probably are realizing is, is that you're, you're not a business owner yet. You're, you're more or less self-employed. And it's it's you kind of running around, holding it together, and you're doing all the roles in the business and doing all the functions yourself, and and that's okay. Um, but now it's time to start thinking about okay, I, I need to be doing three things uh, at once, and I need to set out time for these three things. So the first thing is is you're working in the business, and so basically you're doing everything I just described. You're you're answering the customer phone calls, you're fulfilling the orders, you're making sure they're happy. 
You're making sure that the trains are running on time. You're making sure vendor bills are getting paid. Taxes are getting paid. You're just working in the business. And then the second thing you're doing, maybe you got you to gotta take one day a week and you got to work on the business because now we got to build a business. And so you're working on the business. So what does the marketing system look like? You know, I'm getting customers. But I don't really know where they're coming from. I want to get more. I want to increase sales. And so what does the marketing system look like? Where are they coming from? How do I double down on that? Is it, is it TikTok? Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Is it Google organic? Is it Google paid? I don't know. Like I need to really figure out this marketing system or, or maybe it's like, you know, I don't need to do any marketing. I got all the business I need. My problem is just get stuff done. I, I need, I need, I need bodies. I need hands. I need, I need laborers. I need staff. So maybe you got to work on the employee training system, the employee recruiting system. Uh, you're working in, you're working on the business. You're working on the systems. And you really got to know the difference between those two functions, those two things. They're very different things. And, and, uh, <laughs> And then, the, and then the third thing is you, you're working on yourself. Uh, every business uh, reaches the personal limitations of the founder. So like I mentioned earlier, nobody teaches us how to run a small business. Nobody teaches us how to be a leader. Nobody teaches us how to be a manager. Nobody teaches us basic marketing, basic, basic bookkeeping, finances, accounting, all of these things we have to learn. And, and as founders, we have to, we have to, work on ourselves so we have to read books we have to go to conferences we have to talk to we have to get we have to get coaches and mentors and listen to podcasts we got to groom ourselves and so one day a week's got to be on that at least and so in the so let's say you got a little bit of something going you know five days a week just keeping the dang business going and then one day a week maybe you're just like turning everything off and I'm going to pick one piece of the business and try to work on it. And then, and then the last day of the week is, okay, I'm going to spend five hours and I'm going to read. I'm going to, you know, maybe and a lot of times, whatever it is you're reading or learning is block and tackling for whatever stage of the game you're in. Like for instance, one time when I was building green Pow, I learned, I realized that words on a screen really matter because I was, I was transitioning from a blue collar entrepreneur to a tech entrepreneur. And, and it really, I was, I was just dumbfounded as to how important words on a screen are uh, when it comes to explaining something to somebody and getting them to take action on what it is you want them to do. And so, I, and so I, I was like, man, copywriting is really important. And I don't know the first damn thing about copywriting. And so I just read every book I could get my hands on about copywriting. And I, and I became like a pretty decent copywriter in six months. Um, so that's an example of working on yourself. So, 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 so you got to do all three of those things at once. And, and if you don't, then you'll kind of get stuck in self-employed land and, and never break out of that. I love that. Oh my gosh. This is gold. Yeah. <laughs> Golden. I, now I, I'm going to direct you to the business owners that are ready to exit. What would you recommend to those business owners? They've done all this and they're, they're, they're either, smart enough now while they're building their business to prepare for exit or they're getting ready to exit. What, what would you speak to on exiting? So yeah, everybody, I, not everybody, but uh, most small business owners would like to sell their business one day. Um, that's one of the cool things about starting a business is ultimately it's an asset that maybe you could sell at some point. You can't sell your job. You can't sell uh, your career. Uh, you can sell an asset that you're kind of building and, and uh, you need to plan for that. You need to be proactive about that. You need to, to, you need, you need to be working an exit strategy that, that, that takes about five years, give or take to kind of groom um, based on my experience. There's a great book on this called built to sell. And if you could read that book and implement everything the author talks about, you're, you're, you're basically building something that, somebody can take and plug into their bigger thing. And most business owners think, or they, they dream about selling their business from the standpoint of, oh man, this thing is like a headache to run and I'm not making as much money as I want. And a lot of the people that work for me hate me and I hate them. And like, I'm just miserable in this business and I just want to sell it. Somebody buy it. Nobody's going to buy your basket of problems. You, you, like, <laughs> you're going to be in love with the business 
and almost not want to sell it if you're ever able to get it to a point where somebody would buy it. And so um, being proactive about it, building it to sell, and and working a, a, an exit plan in terms of how you build in the systems and the processes and the repeatability um, to make it run smooth where it could run without you is a big piece of it uh, to where somebody or bigger company would buy it is, is a big piece of, of trying to build a business that, that could be acquired. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love it. Gee, do you, I have one more question for him, but do you have anything? Yeah, I, I was just going to ask a single clarifying question. Um, so what, what you would recommend is actually when you start building your, your company or when you're building it, you actually have in mind that you, you need some exit plans at, at some point of time. Is that it? That's correct. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite books is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Dr. Stephen Covey. And one of the chapters mm -hmm. in that book is called Begin with the End in Mind. And and mm -hmm. selling a business is a much like that from from like year one, you're beginning with the end in mind. So what does the end in mind look like? Okay, 10 years from now, I got to have this business at 5 million or 3 million a year in revenue. It's got to have 20 employees. It's got to have these kinds of managers. It's got to have these kinds of, of systems. And, and you're building towards that is what you want to do. Um, most 90, 95% of business owners, maybe more, don't do that. And it's kind of like, um, it's just it's just shooting from the hip and whatever you get is whatever you get. And usually that's not a successful outcome. So mm -hmm. yeah, you do need to begin with the end of mind and and build towards that. Because building a lifestyle business and building a business that is uh, maybe one that you might hand down to your children uh, and one that you don't intend to sell is is really different from building a business that you do intend to sell. Um, because the business you do intend to sell is managed from the spreadsheet and the mm -hmm. one that you plan on keeping a lot of times is managed from the heart. And, and so you kind of have to know the difference in styles. Yeah. And if you intend to sell that business, I advise, I would advise you to, to not manage it from the heart. Uh, you need to manage it from the spreadsheet uh, or, or mm -hmm. else you won't have a good outcome. Okay. Love, oh my so God. So valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. golden 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 oh brian you're so this is amazing can you speak to us a little bit more on this exit thing like what can you paint your picture a little bit how, how did this look like for you and maybe maybe your listeners can kind of envision themselves in your story yeah so so i had never anticipated on selling my business and and so i was like i'm like i said earlier i was running it from the heart and i was running it um, not sloppy, but there was a lot of avoidable expenses, um, that I, that the business was bearing that, that it didn't have to, and because I, I just wanted to run it in a certain style. I, an example of that might be, um, the, the shop that the business ran from, you know, we had 90 trucks coming in and out every day and I had a full-time person that, that their only, their job was to only polish the floor in the shop because I wanted the floor to look gleaming like a like a car dealership because that was important to me personally didn't really have to do that but we spent you know 70 80 thousand dollars a year doing that and if you're running a business from the spreadsheet you would never do that um mm -hmm. so so these these were examples of like you know my style of business ownership was different from 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 you know how you would need to run a business to get it sold so i made the decision to sell the company uh, about year 13, when I came to the realization that I had kind of taken it as far as I was, as, as, as I was willing to take it. Uh, you, you talk about, uh, or you talk about gr working on yourself. I had, I had reached a point of personal growth where I was plateauing and I didn't really have the ambition to go to the next level in that industry. And it took me about a year to realize that. And I was going sideways for about a year and I thought, well, I'm just going to sell the business. And then I was confronted with the reality of, oh, you've screwed up. <laughs> you haven't rent, you haven't built this thing to sell. And, mm -hmm. and so I had to reverse engineer, basically take the business almost down to the, to the studs and rebuild it from the inside out with everything that would need that, that needs to happen 
to to get it sold and that took almost two years and uh, it was kind of like you know b- being on the goal line and 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 you're just you're 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 doing all of these things and rushing through them ideally i, I would have done, taken five years and gone through that comfortably but the, the the business was in good health and it was profitable so i was able to get it acquired if i had to do it all over again i would have been much more proactive with how i did it, how i did it but uh, but it took two years, a little, little more than two years, got it sold. And then uh, I took about a year off after that, figured out what I wanted to do with my life and, and that I needed another project. And that's where the idea for Green Pal uh, came about and, and went all in on becoming a tech entrepreneur. Hmm. So, so, so Green Pal, did you build it so it's possible to exit it? Or... Yes, this company, uh, tech companies are kind of, naturally oriented that way mm-hmm. because they they are process driven that's that's one of the that's one of the beautiful things about a tech business is that at its core is systems because it it is a tech business and so from the day one everything is repeatable and scalable and mm-hmm. builds and and can just continue to grow and grow and grow um whereas green pal i mean whereas whereas my first company uh my landscaping business was a lot of hand-to-hand combat. It was a lot of relationships. It was a lot of finesse. It was a lot of me kind of shooting from the hip and those things aren't scalable. So, so green pal from day one is a, is a systems driven business that can, that can grow at infinity. And, uh, and so that the nature of that does make it very, uh, attractive to be acquired by, by other companies. I love this. Mm. Ah, so what, so what keeps you excited right now? You're, you're pretty deep into green pal right now. Is that your biggest? Yeah. Green pal's my baby. It's the reason I, I get out of bed in the morning. And, it, and <laughs> when I made it, when I sold my last company, I, I thought, you know, that was really hard. And the, the next business, I'm just going to run it as long as I'm having fun and I'm not going to do it if I'm not having fun. And luckily I've had fun running this company and I've had some hundred hour weeks building this thing, but I, I really haven't worked a day in, in 10 years. This has always been what I wanted to do because this business can touch the mass market. It It's fun to have a business where hundreds of thousands of people can use the products that you're helping build. And, and to me that, 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 that's impactful. What we build is important. It, 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 it is, it is important because small business owners use it to run their life, to run their livelihood. And we get emails and messages every day, like, you know, from, from lawn care services saying, because of, of being able to access green pal, I could pay off student loan debt, or I could put a kid through college, or I could put a down payment on a house. So what we do is important and it, and it's a good thing. And, and that's fun for me. And so I'll keep running this as long as I'm having fun. And we get to a point where like, I'm not good at it or I'm not enjoying it then we'll get a professional CEO or, or we'll explore an exit at that point. I love, I, I love mm-hmm. that. Okay. So let's see if I got this right. So green pal, you work, you actually help business owners in the land, in the greens industry, as well as you're connecting them to the consumers. That's correct. Yeah. So, so the, the cust- our customer is landscaping companies. They pay to use the platform. The, the, the end result of that is, consumers can hire them off the shelf, like ordering something on Amazon. And so the end result is this, this Uber like experience where you don't have to call around and, and leave voicemails and haggle over pricing and worry about if they're going to show up or not because the, the, these lawn care companies uh, run their business on our platform. The entire experience is, is, is modulated. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, they're going to show up on time because they're scored and because they're rated. And, and so the good providers get promoted on the platform and the bad ones get demoted. And so this doesn't mm-hmm. exist if you try to hire somebody off of a Google search because you don't really have access to that information. Whereas a platform like GreenPal, uh, the continuous kind of improve uh, scoring of, of transactions helps us um, tee up a, 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 an experience for consumers where they just push a button and get it done. Oh, I love this. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This is so brilliant, yeah, me too. Ryan. <laughs> it so, really is. so the business owners that you work with, you said your clients are the business owners. 
so they um uh, are these mostly lawn care? Is it all lawn care or is there other? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So all, all landscaping maintenance. So anything around lawn mowing, uh, shrubs, uh, gutters, leaf removal, seeding, things like that. The, these these small business owners provide all those services. You can use GreenPal to to get pricing and order all of those services. And uh, and and it's and it's men and women uh, that operate in this industry. Um, and it's mostly small business owners. So one, one, one person to show maybe a, a, a helper or two, that's who, that's who we're in business to try to help grow their business. And it sounds like you gamify it. I love that. That's so fantastic. Mm -hmm. That accountability layer is important. And, and, uh, it's important because that's what drives the, the ultimate, um, uh, positive outcome for consumers that sign up for it. But, uh, but also it's just important because, Again, nobody teaches anybody how to run a small business. So it's nice to have kind of like this coach in your pocket. It's like, okay, you know, you've got 20 commitments today. You know, you need to get out and service them. And, 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 and you know, ordinarily, you know, if you didn't have that, you know, sometimes a, a, a solo entrepreneur might be like, ah, I just don't feel like working today. Well, if there's no accountability layer, then those 20 customers, it's like, where's my lawn guy? And that's usually what happens. Well, with Green Pal, it's kind of like, well, if you don't, then your, you know, your your rating's gonna go down and then your chances for next week to win more customers goes down with it. And so it's just kind of a nice kind of like accountability layer that doesn't exist otherwise that that we've spent the decade build, building to to help improve outcomes for consumers and and sellers. Wow. It, if mm -hmm. um if a consumer is listening. Um, I, obviously you've done, you're, you're, you're going through these companies and vetting them for the consumer, which is brilliant. And then for those of you that are the business owners, um, especially if you're in the lawn care industry, uh, my goodness, make sure you know that Brian exists. I think that <laughs> this is phenomenal that the service that you're providing for both ends, it's absolutely totally. brilliant. <laughs> Totally. We have, we, we, we have to solve problems for, for both sides as well. You know, if, 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 if there aren't, uh, if, if consumers aren't getting value from it, then, then vendors won't want to come on and use it and vice versa. So you have to add value to both sides to make the whole thing kind of work. That's, and that's one of the challenging things about building something like this is you have to solve for both at the same time. That is very, mm -hmm. I can only imagine how challenging that would be that you've done yeah. it. It sounds like you're doing it well. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Gidi, you have any questions? No, um, no. Yeah, I think, uh, is there, as we wrap this up, Brian, is there any last thoughts, comments that you want to share with everyone before we ask you the final question? Yeah, you know, we talked about earlier, you know, how hard this is and how you need to manage your expectations and, and uh, how you need to do all three things at once, working in the business, on the business, on yourself. And I don't want to, paint a negative picture of what business ownership is and looks like, because for me, it's been one of the best things I've done with my life. So, so don't let those things dissuade you. Um, uh, I want to encourage anybody out there who's thinking about starting a business or is in it to keep going. It's worth it. It's, it's worth it to build something, mm -hmm. to build that asset that's bigger than you, that, that can carry on without you. That's one of the best things I've done with my life. So keep going. It's worth it. Oh, thank yeah. you for, thank I you, Brian. That. Thank yeah. you for expanding the the minds and the hearts of all the entrepreneurs out there listening to this today. Thank you so much. This has been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, so tell us what would listeners do next to connect with you? Yeah. Anybody that wants to try out GreenPal, just go to greenpal.com. You can sign up. Uh, anybody wants to hit me up, LinkedIn's a great place to reach me. Just drop me a DM there. Cool. Excellent. Go ahead, Giddy. Yeah, I'm just going to say thank you again for coming on the show, Brian. It's It's been so valuable. And I hope you listeners, you've been taking notes because I think there's been a lot of gold in here. <laughs> and yeah, for if, sure. If, if, if you want to know more about Brian, uh, you could go to LinkedIn and send him a, a DM or you can go to uh, greenpower.com. Even if you're a long care business or if you're a consumer wanting to... to uh, yeah, buy some services. So thank you once again, Fine. I'm Gita Arka. And I'm awesome Angie Ingstrom. Thank you everyone for listening. 
keep your momentum, keep moving forward. And if you want to learn more about what Gidi and I do with uh, virtual events, with Elite Virtual Stages, and how we help businesses scale, you can find us on Facebook or on the web at elitevirtualstages.com forward slash report. And once again, Brian, thank you. Thank you so much for being on today and encouraging our listeners. Well, thanks for having me on. I enjoyed it. I appreciate it. Yay. And I love that. I love that. You're having fun. If you're not having fun, it's not worth doing. Like, let's start over and like, let's find the fun. I love that. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) All right. Keep, keep, Keep the momentum, everyone.